Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm excited to introduce the latest addition to my list of FPV frames, the Rad Scout. It's a lightweight version of the 7-inch Rad Lion frame, where the Rad Lion was designed first to be super stiff, ensuring beautifully crisp GoPro footage, and second, for range and flight time. The Rad Scout swaps those priorities around, shifting the focus to weight reduction and flight time. So we're starting off with some flight footage here to give an example of the range and flight time that's possible with a well thought out Rad Scout build. For this example, I'm flying with a 6S1P lithium ion battery made from 21700 cells with a capacity of 5000 milliamp hours. The drone has 2306 motors at 1350 kV. I've swapped out the 1050 kV F80 motors I was using for ADAS testing and put on some 2306 1350 kV motors for today's success testing. We're going to find out what the Rad Scout's max range and flight time is with a single 6S lithium ion pack. I was a little surprised how similar the amp draw was between the 8S and 6S flights. All things being equal, according to Ohm's law, the current draw should go down as the battery voltage increases. Now what I think accounts for the similarity between the amp draw for the 8S and 6S flights is that the 8S 21700 pack was 161 grams heavier than this 6S 21700 pack that I'm using for this flight. Motor size and make have an impact on efficiency and range, but weight plays the biggest part when trying to get the most you can out of your long range build. As the weight of a quad increases, the motors have to work harder to lift the extra weight. This probably accounts for the 8S build having a similar amp draw to the 6S Rad Scout build. Speaking of the 8S flight, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, I'll put a link to that 37 minute, 32 kilometer flight up in the corner here. During this flight, the current meter is still calibrated for 8S flights, so the milliamp hour count in the OSD is reading low. After this flight and recharging the pack back at home, I could see that the flight had used a total of 4,650 milliamp hours of the 5,000 milliamp hour capacity. Which is in pretty good performance considering the cold weather was less than ideal for lithium ion cells. They perform their best in an ambient temperature around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The Rad Scout weighs in at only 135 grams, making it one of the lightest 7 inch frames available. Yeah, I just have to turn my light off here so you can see the scale. It's 133, I, I call it 135. If using 2408 or smaller motors uh, with well-selected electronics, a seven inch Rad Scout build can weigh in at under 400 grams, uh, not including props and battery straps. By combining the lightweight of the frame with an efficient motor and propeller combination like the T-Motor F80 and Gemfan 7035 propellers, flight times can easily exceed 30 minutes. My personal record with the Rad Scout uh, was done with an 8S build and the flight time was 37 minutes and a round trip distance of 32.4 kilometers. With a lightweight build like the Rad Scout, the current draw in flight can be quite low. This makes it possible to use higher capacity lithium ion cells with a lower tolerance for current. For example, my 8S Rad Scout build pulls 7 to 8 amps at 60 km per hour. With such a lightweight build requiring much less current draw, there's a, a much wider variety of lithium ion cells that are usable. Uh, I've myself have done uh, that 37 minute flight was done with uh, lithium ion cells with a maximum current draw of 15 amps and uh, they they handled the flight just fine. A lot of the weight savings comes from swapping out the Rad Lion's 8 millimeter thick carbon fiber arms for the Rad Scout's 6 millimeter thick foam core carbon arms. The foam core carbon has about a 15% weight savings compared to solid carbon fiber of the same thickness. The one downside being that foam core carbon is not as resilient in a hard crash, so I recommend having a reasonable amount of flight experience before building a Rad Scout for yourself. Now since they're uh, based on the same design, the Rad Lion and the Rad Scout, of course all the uh, TPU parts, the 3D prints, are all interchangeable between both frames. 
I guess the only exceptions being the arm guards for the Rad Lion are going to be a little too thick for the Rad Scout. I guess you could just change the uh, the depth of the part in Kira uh, on the Z-axis. Just make it a little shorter. Uh, do a couple test prints and you should be able to get one to fit. And I myself don't use the receiver cover for my uh, my Rad Scout build, but if you did want to use the Rad Lion's receiver cover down here, you'd have to change the height on the Z-axis as well to bring it in flusher to the to the bottom plate here if you if you minded. You could just leave it sticking out a little bit as well if you want. But other than those two uh, exceptions, all the all the other 3D prints will fit uh, interchangeably between the two frames. So all of the GPS and SMA mounts are interchangeable between the two frames. Uh, and with the new frame here is also coming a bunch of new 3D prints. So these will fit as I was saying, the, the Rad Lion and the Rad Scout. So I've got a new uh, dual SMA and M8Q5, no, no, this is the uh, SAM M8Q GPS, and the dual SMA and the M8Q5883 GPS, and another dual SMA, and this is for the M10583 GPS. And then I've also made a, a TPU part for just SMA with no GPS on it. Uh, that's because in an attempt to save as much weight as possible, I put my uh, GPS onto the arm so that I could so I could get rid of this part of the, uh, the mount and just save a few more grams. But now at the moment I was it's gonna look a little strange because I've actually stuck a triple SMA on here, and that's just because I'm I want to experiment with uh, using my own two DIY crossfire antennas there, and then my video antenna here. So I just wanted to experiment with those DIY crossfire antennas and see how the uh, reception works using two of those compared to using uh, a barred pole and an immortal T like I normally do. Yeah, I just wanted to double check that before uh, see how well the the antennas work before I decide whether or not to do a video about how to make your own. Oh, and uh, yeah, so there is also a triple SMA with no GPS and uh, a triple SMA with for the uh, Matek M8Q5883 GPS. Oh, and one last 3D print that's available is the, uh, I think I actually never ended up putting this up on Thingiverse before, but it's, uh, it's up there now. There's a a TPU part that you can print out that fits into the cutout for the letters on the frame. Uh, so it just clicks in because it uh, fits just right. And the, uh, for the Rad Lion, you would use just the standard Rad infill print. And for the Rad Scout, you want to just change the Z axis in Kira to uh, 2.3 millimeters. And then it'll fit just right for the Rad Scout that it comes up just nice and flush with the top plate. So even though, as I was saying earlier, I shifted the focus away from GoPro footage and onto, uh, and just focused on to reducing the weight to increase the flight time. But uh, this does still include the press nuts in the front here for the GoPro mount. And I have done some flights with this with a, a GoPro on it. I'll, uh, I'll actually show you some of that footage for that right now. For this flight, I'm testing out the Rad Scout with my Hero 8 mounted up on top. And I'm just kind of playing around having fun with this one this time. This, uh, this was still with those same 2306 1350 kV motors, except uh, this, this flight was done with an 8S battery and no, uh, no throttle limit. It's pretty punchy down low in the throttle, but uh, not in the top half. I think the 2306 motors are a little underpowered to, uh, to be able to really have good throttle response in the upper end. They handle it fine in the lower end, but once uh, you start asking too much of them, they, you can tell they're, they're just underpowered and they can't handle it really. So it accelerates really well from zero to 80 kilometers an hour about. Then once I get up to about 80 kilometers an hour, I, 
and that's eight, I'll get to about 80 at about half throttle. Uh, but the whole second half of the throttle only gets me like another 15 kilometers an hour on top of that. Because I think that, like I was saying, the, the motor just uh, just doesn't have it in it. You know, being so light for a seven inch build, this, uh, this accelerated really nicely. I could get some good acceleration up towards the tree and then uh, go off the throttle and just let the, the quad coast up in the air over the tree. This was actually a, a really fun build to, uh, to fly like this. So like I was saying earlier, this flight was done on 8S, but it's on uh, 8S lithium ion. So this uh, freestyle flying that I'm doing here is all, or uh, tree diving, whatever you want to call it. It's all done on uh, lithium ion packs. This was with uh, Molly cell P28A cells. They're 18650 cells. That's why the, I don't think it would it wouldn't uh, fly this nicely with uh, 8S21700 cells on it because it's just so much heavier. This uh, 8S18650 pack is is just about right for uh, this kind of flying for the weight. I'm getting a, a pretty good flight time out of it still, despite uh, despite using the throttle so much. And uh, what are we now? We're about seven minutes into the flight or something. It's taking a little bit of getting used to here because it accelerates more than my other builds, but it doesn't have as much uh, momentum because of the, low, the lighter weight. So a couple of times here I'm falling short on my... Uh, you know, going up in the air and getting off the throttle and trying to dive down a tree, and I'm falling a little short because it's not, it's not carrying its momentum as uh, as much as I'm used to with the, the lighter weight. You can see up in the uh, top right corner, underneath the battery voltage or its per cell battery voltage, the one underneath that with the uh, sort of squiggle or S looking symbol, is the uh, throttle, the throttle level. And that's, uh, I guess, from zero to 100 so, as a percentage. So you can see a lot of the time I'm flying you know, in the 20, 30% kind of throttle range. I have an ADAS LiPo that I could uh, try this with. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll see how it flies with that ADAS LiPo now that it seems like this ESC is going to be okay with this. This is the uh, the Foxier Monster ESC that I'm I'm using for this flight. Well, it was uh, nine minutes and eight kilometers of uh, I know kind of moderate tree diving freestyle. Motors are a little bit warm, but just a little warm, nothing at all much. Well, that was kind of fun. It wasn't uh, as fast and throttly as I expected. It, uh, it was really fast from like, you know, zero to 80. And then after you get over 80 kilometers an hour, it just kind of, it was sort of like a regular 6S 1350 KV quad. So it's kind of interesting. It was just the lower end of the throttle that it was really fast at. All right, well, that was a uh, full GoPro Hero 8 on uh, the Rad Scout with 2306 1350 KV motors and gem fan. 7035 props and uh, 8S 18650 lithium ion. That footage was taken with a, uh, a full-size Hero 8 mounted on the front here. But uh, I think obviously a, uh, a naked GoPro would be a much better pairing for this frame to help uh, keep the weight down and uh, conserve the nice long flight time that you'll get with the low weight. I've got two more frames coming out in the next month or so, so if you're uh, not already subscribed, remember to do so, so you don't miss those upcoming videos. And uh, for now, why don't you uh, pick one of these two other videos to watch.